Good evening, folks. This morning, we looked at the most power-packed coronal mass ejection of sunspot cycle 25. It came off the northern active region of sunspots, involving several of the individual complexes, and reached level M3.4. Not a tremendously powerful flare, like an X-class blast, but its long duration made its ejection potential exceptional. The peak X-ray emission is seen here as bright white plasma accelerated to relativistic speed, emitting the flare. But the important part is the coronal mass ejection, the CME. We saw it this morning, mostly heading out to the left, behind Earth's orbit. It was a titanic blast, indeed the biggest looking of this cycle. And while it should be obvious that most of it will miss us, we said this morning that if it did have a fainter, sparser, broader aspect to the ejection, it could give us a glancing blow later this week. Indeed, the full coronagraph images seem to show that faint plasma, and both Enlil spirals are now updated. So, with which one do we agree? Well, not this one. NASA's here shows a fairly powerful impact to Earth, and that's just not going to happen. The bulk of the CME will miss. Instead, I favor the Enlil spiral put out today by NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, which shows a fainter impact. The less dense and slightly slower aspect of the CME is likely to impact Earth in about two days, and it wouldn't produce much geomagnetic activity, except that I'd expect to also see the coronal hole stream amplify the geospace solar wind here on Tuesday night or Wednesday. The combined events may provide geomagnetic storms, but they are still unlikely to be scary, and even if this blast had been aimed right at Earth, it wasn't going to be a grid killer, not even with Earth's weaker magnetic field. We will continue to monitor these sunspots and the solar wind this week. I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.